<laughs> so, Liliana, how are you? Nervous. I even brought the water. Okay, so she is nervous, but I think our audience is really nice. They're not going to bite, <laughs> so you can relax. And uh, maybe um, in a minute or two, we'll start your talk. So, as far as I know, you are a neuroscientist. Is that correct? Yes. I study how the brain cells develop and end up forming a healthy brain. So you are kind of like more on the developmental neurobiology side, but now yeah. your talk is about the senses. So it's yes. not really, well, no, it's related, but it's not directly related to what you do as a researcher. So why did you uh, pick this or pick the senses as the topic for your talk? Because even though I work on how the brain is formed, but this is a structure, but we are not only a brain, we also have a mind. And this connection between the mind and the brain is something that I've always found very fascinating. And the senses is a big part of this. So I'll talk to you about the senses. Okay, we are looking forward to that. So everyone, please join me to welcome Liliana with her talk, The Senses. Thank you. So, as you might have realized from the science exhibition show, our senses are really important. It's how we learn, it's how we protect ourselves, and it's how we experience the world. In this talk, we'll talk about and we will explore the human senses, how many senses we have, how they work, and what happens when you lose one of them. Let's start simple. So, how many senses do humans have? Give me a number. Try it out. Five. Okay, so people tell me that we have five senses. So very early in school, we learned that we have five senses. These include smell, taste, audition, touch, and um, vision. Uh, but if you ask a scientist uh, nowadays, they will actually tell you that we have something between 20 to 30 different senses. And the, some of the ones that we use more often include kinesthesia. This is the sense to move. So you know when you are moving your arm or when you are walking. You have the sense of thermoception, which is the sense of temperature. I know when I'm cold or when I'm warm. You have the sense of balance, allows me to stand straight without falling, and you to sit down without falling. We have the chronoception, which is the sense of time, how much time has passed since I started my talk, for example. And finally, this proprioception. This is the sense of yourself. You always know where your body is in relation to yourself, even if you're not looking. An example, for example, try it out. Close your eyes, and now touch your nose, your ears, your knee. Okay, so even though you are not looking, you know exactly what your board, where your body parts are. And this is an incredible sense, right? So these are a lot of them, and you might be wondering, where do I actually use all these senses? And you use them all the time without realizing, even in the most basic actions, such as the case of me drinking from this glass of water. The simple action of drinking from a glass of water has more senses than you might be aware of, and I will explain them to you. So first, I see the glass. Then, by my sense of kinesthesia or movement, I know how much I need to extend my arm to be able to grab the glass. Through my hands, I can tell you that this uh, glass of water, the water is cold, but not very icy, which is good. Then, using my sense of balance, I can lift this without spilling the water all over myself. And then, because I know where my mouth is, even though I'm not looking, I can take this glass into my mouth. And I can tell you that this doesn't have bubbles, which is good, I don't like bubbles. So just in case you were counting, there were five senses, different senses, in just drinking from this glass of water, okay? So one of the myths about the senses is that it, we use each sense individually. So I hear a cat, I see the tree, I touch the chair, but actually, all of our senses are working together, as you might have realized from this example of drinking from the glass. You all are always using all of them without even realizing. And this is great. Your mind keeps receiving information from uh, the entire world through your senses. And, but because your mind is receiving information from all of the senses at the same time, sometimes one sense can actually trick another. And I'll show you three examples of how your senses co cooperate with each other and how sometimes they even trick. So let's start with my favorite example of how your eyes have a lot to say about what you hear. In this video, pay attention, look at it, and tell me what do you hear. Do you hear ba or fa? Ba. Ba, Raise your hand ba, who hears ba. Ba, 
Raise your hand who hears fa. Most of the room hears fa. Now please close your eyes. Listen closely. Do you hear ba or fa? Please raise your hand who hears ba. Raise your hand who hears fa. Okay, you are the one out. <laughs> okay, so depending on whether you have your eyes open or your eyes closed, you hear different things. Most of you. So, and why is this? It's because the way that you speak, the sounds that you make, are completely related to the way that your mouth moves. And in this example is uh, very nice because it shows you that when you are sh shows you that when you are speaking with someone, you are not only listening to them, but your inf your vision actually has a lot to say about what you understand when someone is speaking to you. Another great example that I would like to show you and try out with you is your balance. Your balance is uh, it's in close interaction with your eyes. If you would please uh, stand up, I'll do a little experiment. And now please uh, raise your leg and try to balance yourselves. Okay, great. Now put it down again, close your eyes and lift your leg again. Okay, you are way more wobbly this time, so thank you very much. <laughs> so, <laughs> you might have noticed that when you had your eyes closed, it was much harder for you to keep your balance. That's because your eyes are giving information into your body on how you should balance it. So this is a great example of how you, your balance really needs your vision to work out properly. Another example that you can try at home is you get two gelatins, one red and one green, and then you add the same exact amount of sugar. And then you ask people to try them out and tell you which one do they think is sweeter. Most people will tell you that the red one is sweeter. Actually, studies have shown that people will think that the red one is 10 times sweeter than the green one. And why is this? This is because we associate green with sour foods and red with sweeter foods. And so our eyes see red and we expect sweeter stuff, so it tricks our sense of taste. And this interaction between food and uh, between taste and vision is very well known for the food industry and they will use it to take advantage of you. Uh, next time you go to a supermarket, uh, supermarket uh, check out their shelves. And you will, if you go, for example, to the sweet product shelf and you take a look, you will realize that most of their products tend to be red and pink. And while light products are pretty much always with a blue label. So hopefully you have realized how your senses are in close collaborating with, uh, collaboration with each other and that you are always using the information from all of your senses. Well, not using all of it, you are not aware of it, but you are definitely receiving this information. And although this interaction between your senses may sometimes trick you in small ways, it has one enormous advantage. If by any chance you lose one of your senses, all the other ones can compensate for that loss. One of the most famous examples of this compensation is blind people. So it is a well-known fact that blind people have a better hearing sense than we do. And they use it, for example, to echolocate how far away from an object they are. And they do it pretty much like bats do it. So they will emit a sound with their mouth or with their cane, and they will listen closely to the echo, to the wave sound that comes back. And depending on whether this sound is louder or quieter, they will know how far away from an object they are. Now, some blind people uh, learn how to do this naturally. Others have to be taught. Some of them cannot do it at all. And uh, even the ones that can do it, if you think about it, and uh, the, this blind person is in a very big open space with a lot of people going back and forth, like an airport, then it gets really hard for them to be able to listen to the eco coming back. And this is where science and technology comes in. In the past 50 years, technological advances have allowed scientists to develop new technologies to help improve blind people and deaf people uh, to help them improve their life and with their loss of sense. One such example is the BrainPort device. This is a new technology that allows blind people to see with their tongue. Yeah, I'm not kidding, it's really their tongue. And uh, uh, this, uh, this device can be used for, with children and adults born blind or that became blind later in life due to illness or injury. 
and how does this work? So this device has a pair of goggles with a camera and a little plastic lollipop that has tiny little electrodes that will give an electric shock into the tongue of the user. It's not torture, it's not painful. People that use this device uh, uh, say that it feels like champagne bubbles in their tongue. And how does this work? So the glasses with the camera, they will record what is happening in front of the person. And then they will transform this image into a black and white pixelated image. Each pixel in the image corresponds to an electrode in the lollipop. Uh, and brighter pixels have a stronger electric shock and darker pixels have a weaker electric shock. So this kind of creates an electric shock picture in their tongue. With a bit of training, blind people can uh, uh, associate this electric shock image to actual objects and actually understand how far away from an object they are and grab it, for example. A super successful story of someone using this device is Eric Weihenmeyer. This is the first and only blind person to not only scale Mount Everest, but uh, the highest mountains in all of the seven continents. And you can see him here using uh, the device to climb an inside wall. But what about deaf people, people that are unable to hear? If you t uh, pay attention, you will, uh, because we are not uh, taught how to use sign language in school, they have, uh, deaf people have a big problem in communicating with us. If you are speaking face to face with them, they can still understand you because, as I told you before, the way that you, what you want to say has a lot to do with how you move your mouth. So we'll, they will simply read your lips and understand what you want to say. But if there is an announcement in a supermarket or in the U-Bahn or S-Bahn, then it's, they have no way of understanding what has just been said and they have just lost their train. So, this is why scientists have developed a vest that can be worn underneath their clothes. And this vest is equipped with small vibration sensors that are like the ones that you have in your cell phones. And with a phone app, uh, deaf people can record what is being said, and then each word is translated into a vibration pattern in their vest. With only eight hours of training with this vest, uh, deaf people are already able to associate certain words to certain vibration patterns. With a bit more training, this video is the result. What you see here is Jonathan, he was born deaf and he's wearing a demonstration vest in which the vibration motors actually light up a light when they are active. And you'll see that he's able to uh, immediately translate what his colleague is saying into sign language. So take a look. Hi, I'm so you Saeed, see here the vibration motors lighting up. Neo Sensory, a company working on exciting new sound and touch technology. And he's immediately translating what the other person is saying. Quite impressive. So both the vest and the lollipop are two of the new technologies that scientists have developed to help people that have lost a sense, taking advantage of the fact that when you lose a sense, the other ones can be uh, improved and can uh, get better and compensate for the one that you lost. So I told you a lot of stuff today, uh, so I'll try to wrap it up. So we have more than just five senses and you use them all the time, even though you don't realize that you are using them. And uh, because they keep interacting all the time and you are always receiving information from all of them, sometimes they trick you. But this is not such a bad thing when you think that if you ever lose one sense, all the others are there to help you and support you and manage you through. Uh, there was a lot more that I could talk to you about the senses, but there's not enough time. Uh, but I hope you got excited about the topic. If you want to know more uh, experiments that you could do to uh, understand how your senses interact or how they are tricking you, or if you want to know what other technologies uh, are developed or have been developed to help people that have lost uh, one of the senses, you can come to me during the break or during the networking event or find me on Twitter and I'll be very ha uh, happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liliana. Now we have about five minutes for questions. So anyone have any questions? Okay, so Andre, can you please help? 
Um, hi. So my name is hi. Aarti and I come from India. I'm here visiting. It was really fascinating. I just have a question from the point of view of applications of the technologies that you just showed us. How expensive is it? Because, you know, in a country like India, if we want to try and buy some of this for people who have lost senses, how feasible would it be and how expensive is it? Okay, so if I may repeat the question. So the question is how expensive are the current technologies that are available? I, uh, so I can actually not tell you about the, uh, uh, the prices in comparison to India, but for example, in, the, in the Germany, a cochlear device, which is a device to help uh, deaf people, costs around uh, 23,000 euros. And the problem is that not everyone uh, is able or uh, can wear these devices, okay? A vest like this at the moment costs us 10,000 euros. So they are still expensive, but uh, the people that are developing these technologies, they are using uh, crowdfunding uh, uh, campaigns. campaigns, thank you. They are using crowdfunding campaigns, and they are hoping that with the advances of, te of technology, uh, stuff will become cheaper and they can actually reduce the cost. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Do I see someone in the back? Or Okay. Hi, it seems like uh, the uh, vibration vest and the tongue lollipop, they seem interchangeable. So why is it specifically that the tongue lollipop is used for blind people and the vibration vest for deaf people? It seems like it might uh, be the other, uh, the, doing it the other way around might benefit uh, blind people more because they can actually speak, uh, whereas with the tongue lollipop, they might not be able to speak while it's in their mouth. Okay, so if I may re repeat your question, so why the technology not be used the other way around? The tongue w for the deaf. deaf and then the vest for the blind people, is that correct? Is Okay, so. Okay, so I cannot actually ex tell you exactly why they thought about this way, but I can uh, tell you, for example, that the, uh, the the tongue in the lollipop thing, uh, it, it works actually for video. So if there's someone moving in front of them, uh, the lollipop will just make an electric moving uh, thing. So, but if you have a vest, then it's really complicated because you don't have that, each vibration motor is like this, so you don't have that much space. So with the, lo with the little lollipop and the little electrodes, you actually have a lot more area and you can be a, a bit more detailed on what you are showing which is the case of images, you want detail, right? In words, not so much. Um, do I see one more question? Okay, so we have time for one more question. Hi, thanks for the talk, it was a great talk. Thank you. Um, I have one clarifying question. Is the vest, is this actually transmitting the, uh, the sound itself or does it do speech recognition before? Okay, so the question is with the vest, does it actually transmit sound or is it a speech recognition system? It's actually a speech recognition system. So the vest is made so that people can wear it underneath and no one will know that they cannot understand speech. And uh, each word is then recognized for what it is and is then transformed into a certain vibration pattern. So, and only, it, it's not like a gigantic vibration that the person will feel and go. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much, Liliana. One more time, give it up for Liliana. <laughs>